I tell you, uh, in the foster care system, and I deal with group homes in my foundation, and uh, I deal with kids that, just like what you just said, that's been from home to home, and are in foster homes, and some of the kids, once they, once they get it, they grow up, and, you know, they come back to you later on. But uh, when you was uh, in the foster care system, what was the most challenging aspect of aging? Because every year you get older and older, and uh, the challenges become more and more. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? You know, I love that question, James. I really do. I, when, I, when I get asked this question, I first ask uh, the listeners and the viewers to try to imagine a paint strip. Because as you get older, you know, when you first come in, the younger you are, the brighter you are. Everybody likes little kids and this, you know, babies. But when you start getting, and I came in late, you know, so when I started going through puberty and whatnot, um, you become less and less desirable, you know, um, unless there's a work-related uh, reason for the foster care life. Two minutes to the break. break. So one of the one of the roughest parts about that was I was African American, of course, and I could be changed anywhere. Um, and also, I was raised in a very strict seven day I've been at home. You know, we didn't eat pork or any of that. And then suddenly, people put a pork chop in front of you. And say, oh, you think you're you're uppity? Are you not going to eat a pork chop? And it was just like your mommy did it. See, I swear, I had a house that put that pork chop in front of me for about three days. Um, that's a bunch of dinner. And I eventually ate it, and I must admit, it was quite delicious. Matter of fact, I'm having some tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but back then I thought I was going to burn in hell when I ate it, you know. So there's a lot of things like that that, that they changed from that, but still there's room for more. Wow. You know what? I, I, I tell you, uh, growing up just chatting with you, um, just understanding your story, uh, one minute to the break. You turn out to be, I'm talking that, where you at right now, in a very good position, very good. That, that means, I believe, that throughout the journey, you took bits and pieces from each one of the different uh, systems that you might have been in, and uh, the good of that, and put it all together uh, to be the person that you are today, and I'm proud of you, bro, but I'm going to take a station break. But we're going to come back and we're going to continue this great conversation with Lauren Michael Harrison. If you want to be part of this conversation, that's 1 888 344 11 again. That's 1 888 344 It's your life. I'm James Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more. Kevin, the commercial didn't play. Ooh. Kevin? It's playing. Oh. Oh, I, I don't hear it. Oh, we don't hear it in the back. Okay. okay. You might not hear it. I'll turn uh, I hear it. Hang on. Okay. Story of struggle and success. Okay, there, 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 there. It's, it's playing. I just turned your mic off. Okay. Roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, How Journey Don't Fake okay. Over Yet by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. The J.C. Cooley Foundation is a non-profit All right, coming back right after this in uh, it's a 11 minutes. The Cooley Foundation okay. continues to strive to expand its programs and offerings to the youth, young adults, and citizens of our great communities nationwide and overseas. We hope that you'll be able to take part in one or more of the many exciting events
It's time to dream big, think big, and be big. It's time for more It's Your Life. Now, here's your host, James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley, and I tell you, we got my buddy, my friend, Lauren Michaels. Uh, you know, Harris, I got to put the whole thing in there. And, I, and uh, I tell you, he's telling us about his journey. But this man is doing so many things. And, uh, he's non-profit. I mean, just working with kids, just working with everybody uh, is, 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 is phenomenal because we all need help. And we all must understand the power of we. And that's the title of the show that we're talking about today, The Power of We. And listen, to the audience, wherever you're listening to this at, whether you listen to it on Facebook, whether you listen to it on podcasts, all the different podcasts, or radio, you know, in both markets, the California market, the Dallas market, you know, if you want to be part of this great conversation, that's 1-888-344-1170. Again, that's 1-888-344-1170. My friend, Lauren, you refer to yourself as a purpose discovery coach. Can you share with us exactly what that is and how how you accomplished this oh yeah i would love to um a perfect recovery coach which is not the only one uh is what i do is i, I work with people and you know digging through the rubber um a lot of people have a lot of talent they have a purpose they have a big a mission um, and they have trouble maintaining the vision to that mission because they try to take life out of context. You know, only talk about the good things. Um, bury those things that they feel are shaming. Or I can't tell them this because if they knew this, then they wouldn't want that. That sort of thing. And, you know, our stories are who we are. Our stories are what will be here after, you know, our DNA and our... our Fingerprints have gone when we, you know, when we transition ashes to ashes, dust to dust, as we all will. Those things will be gone, but it's our stories that have the potential to live on. And you want to live a life of purpose so that you leave a story that the world continues to tell. You know, so what I do is I help people find their way to that divine purpose. And I find that a lot of people are familiar with the terminology, but they're not familiar familiar with that sacred space, that golden circle that you step within. When you know that everything that has ever happened, everything that is currently happening, and everything that you will encounter in the future is a part of a plan greater than one you could ever offer by yourself. So the way to find purpose is to first realize that you are co-authoring, that you are uh, not doing this all alone, all alone. There, there are so many different things available to us, and not all of them we can see. But the thing about purpose that I love working with people about is that when you are, well, I don't want to say that yet because I'm going to probably want to talk about that later. So, but uh, I help people get to that thing in a nutshell, I could have started the first actually. I tell people that when you find your purpose, you know, when you draw that life giving breath in, your purpose is right, it's what you is standing right after you draw that breath. There's your purpose. And it's standing right next to your passion. Or it should be. Wow. You know, divine purpose, you know. It's also, do you think it's also important, and I know people mean well, they say to others, this is your purpose, this is your purpose in life. You cannot tell somebody else, in your opinion, what their purpose is. They have to get that information, that revelation themselves. So my question to you is, how would someone know that they are not fulfilling their divine purpose? That's an easy one. I love that. Thank you. This saves a lot of unnecessary dialogue. Whenever we are navigating within divine purpose, the main litmus test to prove that you are is that everything you do is connected 
to that feeling of more. It makes you want more. It gives you more to provide to the world. But with that comes, you know, more headaches, more sleepless nights, and also more opportunity, more vision, and more, more, more. So anything that you look around your world and you say, man, I want some more of that, or boy, here, you want some more? Because purpose is inclusive. It's like the word T-O-O, where when you use the word to, where it is intended at the end of a sentence, it's a blessing. It's inclusive. Oh, here, you want some too, Michelle? Come on, James, we got room for you too. But the moment we move it, anywhere but where it was intended at the end of the sentence, it now becomes what I refer to as the John Wayne Gacy of dreams. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, it's too late. I'm too ugly. I'm too fat. I'm too stupid. And it changes everything. So if you find yourself, you know, feeling like anything you are doing is depleting or taking away, that's not within purpose. That is something that is not serving you. Whenever you, when the things that you have in your world are serving you and you are within purpose, it means everybody you touch, including you, want to more. Wow. Be this way. That is, that is an amazing statement. That, that is true because your purpose, and purpose, you know, the, um, it could be challenging, but it shouldn't be a, a burden or, 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 or just something you're just going through the motions. It should be yeah. something that is joyful and knowing that your purpose is going to affect and bring light into other people's lives. So, Lauren, can can you tell our listeners what would you say is your current purpose in life? My current purpose in life, first of all, is in order for me to maintain the navigation within my purpose. I know that I have to everything I everything I utter, everything I speak, everything I think, everything I do. I must mean it. Because the moment I mean it, it instantly becomes meaningful somewhere in this universe. Maybe not for me, but for someone or something. It becomes meaningful. So you mean what you say and you say what you mean. In the Bible it says, cross your T's and dot your I's. Let your gray your I's. Let your gray's be laid. And your maze be laid. Because that means I'm not just throwing things around like the basically. You know, I always, I used to say to I said, you know, think about Mother Teresa. She was not glamorous. <laughs> she did not have a PR firm. And when she was down that alley in Calcutta, I doubt very seriously that she said, oh, look at all them people down there with pustules and spittle and this and the other, broken spirits and broken bones. I bet you if I go down there and help them one day, they may canonize me. No, she didn't slip and fall to help someone. When she knelt down and did whatever she did, she got down on purpose. And when she did that, she meant it. That means that every time she got up, she got up with even more purpose. And that living. Wow. You know, uh, I tell you, Micah, uh, you are many things. One of the things that, uh, that you are, and you do this, and you might not know it, but I know that you are, a motivational speaker. And everything you do, I have seen you, I heard you uh, do work with a client. One day I called you and you was, you was ending the phone call uh, with, with one of the clients. Yeah. You know, so do you consider yourself a motivational speaker or just a coach or, or a combination of both? Uh, Two minutes to the break. That's the one. I would say that when I began, in the half I was seven years ago, my goal was to be a motivational speaker. But then, I started transitioning into more of an inspirational speaker. Because, I, I, I now, and I even have it right here, my intention pen, where I have them cars in it, that I never forget. Through me, not from me. I never deal with writer's block. I never sit down and have to come up with anything. Why? Because it is through me. Not from me. And when you, well, let me speak for me, from my, from my standpoint, when I allow that to permeate through my spirit, what happens is, 
you end up saying things that people have never heard quite that way. For instance, if I said to you in the audience, and I do it all the time, you can eat a horse to order, but you cannot make them, and I do this, and then I'll say, drink, because I just reminded them of something. One minute to the break. But if I would say to them, now tomorrow when you wake up, and this, this day forward, every opportunity that what is greater than places before you, honor it from top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, side to side, corner to corner, and corner to corner, because when you do that, what is greater than you has now been given permission to walk before you, stand beside you, and bring up the rear where there will always be something that's human we cannot see coming. And they, that makes us go, huh? Well, I never thought of it like that before. <laughs> and that, that makes me just, mm, that's the best for me. Wow. So, you know what? I hope that, that answered your question. That, that did. That answered my question, man. You're such an inspiration. But, you know, we have to take a station break. We've got to pay the bills. But when we come Amen. back, when we come back, we're going to focus on your annual event, the Power of We Symposium. I want to talk about that. I want our listening audience to uh, know about that, and I want them to reach out and help out as much as they can. So we're going to take a station break, and we'll be back shortly after the break with It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity. Odyssey.com. It's time to dream big, think big, and be big. It's time for more It's Your Life. Now, here's your host, James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley, and uh, just like I was saying, uh, we, we got my friend, uh, you know, Lauren Michaels uh, Harris, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, such an inspirational guy. And, uh, wow, just so... Uh, just love chatting with him. I love the things that he's doing. Just love the enthusiasm that, that he brings. But he also, he, he has this annual event that uh, is not just Chicago. It's not just the kids there. But I tell you, it, it, it's a pace setter for, I believe, that the whole United States, the whole world need to understand, mm-hmm. you know, that, mm-hmm. hey, this is how you do it. And... Uh, mm-hmm. You know, his event is coming up in, I mean, less than 30 days right now. And uh, I believe that uh, everybody can reach out and help out to make sure that we bring joy, happiness, and the power of we into a lot of people's lives. 
So I tell you, listen, audience, if you want to be part of this great conversation, that's 1-888-344-1170. Again, that's 1-888-344-1170. Lauren, I gotta, I, I, I've been waiting to talk about this annual event. And so, yeah. can, can we do it? Can we do it? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> <He's> some, Absolutely. <laughs> so, my friend, can you tell our listeners uh, about this uh, powerful event that you got up called the Power of We uh, Symposium? And uh, can you just share uh, that? Uh, I know it's happening in Chicago, but it's not just Chicago. People can yeah. be a service and they can help out. Uh, regardless of what it might be. Yes. The, the power of these symposium, it's not just an event. I tell people this and I mean it. I really mean it so it can become even more meaningful in the world. The power of these symposium is an anointed experience. That's the best representation without being there. You know, the, so you have to find yourself in a spot where you try to express something to someone, you go, mm, man, I just can't find the words. Well, many times that's because we, we're walking past or moving through a neighborhood in life. But not enough people have passed you to know it. They haven't named it. You know, this wasn't a mug until someone said, we need to quit calling that thing it and call it a mug, right? So the power of these symposium is a way to harness all of the frequency all of the intention that we have as a collective. Here's why it's so important. You know, well, it can change. I'm I, I, just the name of it I love because if I just do one slight change and turn that bubble up, upside down and I could have made it the power of me, that we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. That's for sure. But the power of me, just turning that letter M into a W changes everything. A lot of us don't realize how much we have to offer until we are in a position where people are seeking what we have. Now tell me about you. So what is it that makes you smile every day? Uh, what are your fears? Uh, all these things. And the people that come to the power of you, they don't come to be surprised. They come out of a sense of expectancy. They expect something wonderful, and that's exactly what happens. So the Power of Me is a one-day event that I use to bring kids from inner city and the hardest-hit neighborhood. They come, and they are celebrated. I don't have it out of Mary. Nothing will get you, Mary Ox, because if you're not to work with you, I'm just saying it. But not for these kids. Um, they can go to that for a number of things. But, like, here in Chicago, we stage it at the Stan Mansion. In Atlanta, we were at the Biltmore Ballroom. Now, why would I do that? It's not to say, oh, look at us, we're uppity. No. It is to give kids a view inside of opportunity that they feel, in many cases, is not available to them. So I took a page from Willy Wonka's playbook one of my favorite movies from childhood. And if you remember that movie, the kids that were, had the golden ticket were forced to wait with their parents outside the gate of the fat kid. And he came out and he, was, he did that to build anticipation. And when we go into any opportunity with anticipation and expect it, we go in ready for anything. And so they watch us when they come and the buses drop these kids off in front. They, we are already, all of us who are there for them, in black tie, tough shoes and gowns. They watch us through the fence, walk that red carpet, pop is screaming at us, and we're in front of us, stepping in the feet. Then we go in the mansion, go out the back door, come around on the city block, and come up right behind them on the sidewalk. What are you looking at? And sometimes they don't even turn around, they're still watching. Some, some stars, look, you know, right. And then they turn around and see it's us. And that's when we get them. We say, listen, that's what I used to think, too. But once you go in, you see that red carpet, then the gate opens. We line it. All of us in our Texas, we line that same red carpet that we just walked down. And now it's your turn. I promise you, I say, you go into this experience like I hope you go into all experiences. First of all, remember, it's never about just one thing. 
go in as a stargazer, that's okay. But if you are open and you will pour into people as well as receive from people, I guarantee you, I promise you with all that I am, you will lose this place, a trailblazer. And it gives kids an opportunity. They go in and they say, okay, and I say, you know, this is a mansion, but in the bathroom it's just a toilet with water and a toilet with water and it's just like the women project. You know, you're sitting on a chair that has four legs, just like the one at your school. But what's different here is the we. Because we are here for you, but we are here for us. And they come in, and we pour into them. And so it's just a wonderful thing. I'm just saying, there's no way I could express it all the way, but I can tell you some of the good things they experience if you want to hear they come in and, uh, let me see who's that trying to call that, get rid of that there. So they come in, and after they go in, they go upstairs to the main ballroom in the mansion, and uh, it begins. This year, the Soul Children uh, Choir of Chicago, Grammy Award winning choir, was uh, headed up by the wonderful, wonderful Dr. Walt Whitney, um, Whitney, um, Whitney for 40 years. He's had this scandal free, uh, skinny, you know, make sure you put that in there. Scandal free. There are these kids that are in the choir now. They have some of them have parents and grandparents who came through this same choir. They received their Grammy for a collaboration with the writer uh, three doors down. But they're going to be uh, just tearing the roof off with their music. We have Wally Green, the United States table tennis um, ambassador to the world. He's going to be there with the number one player in the world from Japan doing an exhibition. Um, Tanya. Um, um, Wiley Brown will be there. We have um, Women of Color, a powerful Women of Color panel that the kids are going to work with. There's going to be a Shark Tank uh, pitch fest. The winner's going to walk away with a $65,000 prize package, um, uh, six months of mentoring, and the, the business is going to be fully incorporated with the parents, of course. And just all kinds of interactivity all day long, um, just so that they can feel what it's like to be poured into, and the main thing about it is, we're very listen. It's new to me, it's not big fancy, it's catered lunch, catered breakfast, but we turn the chairs and we eat off our laps. New to me, heart to heart, eye to eye. Two yeah. minutes to the break. Wow. And <laughs> there's, a, there's one rule, when you come in there, it's adult child, adult child, adult child, and no clicking up. Because we want each person to get to know each person. My purpose with the Apollo Beat Symposium is to introduce people I love to the other people I love. Wow. You know, we, we only got about 90 seconds prior to the break. Uh, but uh, yeah, you had mentioned something on your website, you know, and that it, 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 it talks about uh, the power of we. It also talks about molding tomorrow leaders. And most importantly, it talks about you can. You can. Uh, can, uh, in the next 60 seconds, can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? Well, I'll just give you two examples in a nutshell. Our essay winner in Atlanta, Melanie Ramos, an eighth grader, and I'm doing air quotes. It just so happened, because I don't believe in coincidence, I was on the air the day before, and a guy that was coming on after me, a venture capitalist in the lobby, heard his story, came to the event six months later. Well, her idea that was you know, 1,000 word essay, she got a $750,000 endowment in two scientists to help make that a reality. Changing the generational wealth and everything for her family for generations to come. And it's things like that that just, you know, and, 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 and um, one of the kids that came up on stage and said that when you come back, I'm going to do, be doing great things. She's coming back on the 28th as the lead in Chicago, the Lion King. And I'm like, wow. 30 seconds. You know. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm just, you see, I'm just like stuck. Because again, <laughs> we, our kids are wonderful. That's the best way to put it. If you want to find out how the wonderful thing I'll sit down and say, what's in your mind? What, what are we going to talk about? Wow. We'll come back. We'll be we're going we're gonna to take a station break, but uh, you know, I tell you, man, this is so fantastic. And uh, I can't wait to after station break to get back so we can continue to talk about a great event. Talk about this great man. Talk about these kids and on how we 
of all put together and shaping our next generation, the future of tomorrow. It's yeah. life. I'm James Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories. Odyssey.com. It's time to dream big, think big, and be big. It's time for more It's Your Life. Now, here's your host, James Cooley. Welcome back to the James Cooley Show. We are here with the amazing Lauren Michaels Harris. And the title of today's show is The Power of We. And Lauren was just talking about his The Power of We Symposium. That's happening in less than 30 days in Chicago. And listening audience, if you have any questions for Lauren, please call in at 1-888-344-1170. 1-888-344-1170. You know, Lauren, we hear this term all the time, haters. But what does the term haters actually mean to you? I love this one. <laughs> it's the hashtag. And I popped up on my show, I asked almost every guest, so what do you mean when you say go? You know, I'm going to tell you what haters are. Man, I don't have haters. I have closet fans. <laughs> it's, it's up to me to convince them to come on out. And I know there's something about coming out. So, I'm just saying. So, that is it. Because people don't hate. You know, like, when I, you don't hate people. You may hate what they do. You may hate what they stand for. But we should never hate people. So, you know, that's why, you know, that term, anything that people throw around like spaghetti, hoping it would hit the stick or not when they throw it up against the wall. We weary, you know, loosely used terms and things like that. Anything sloppy. And, and, and hinders is a sloppy term. It's a sloppy term. Because just because you put them there doesn't mean that's where they belong. Our job as uh, influencers um, game changers, impactors, however you want to look at it, is to bring, who else, who needs us the most? The people who are the furthest away, but here's the thing. Haters and people like that, who are at the edge of that forest of confusion, um, of self-doubt, self-deprecation, and a lot of it doesn't even belong to them. But there's so many in the world who say, oh, I'm helping, I'm helping, here's my flashlight, but they're 20 miles in the hill. And anyone knows, no matter, you know, if you have a bright light, no matter where you are, the further away you are, the dimmer the light gets. A true light, true illumination, perfect. Gives you everything you need to come on down from that vantage point and walk right up to the edge of the forest, lock arms. Because now this light isn't just a pinpoint in front of us, it spreads wide. Because we are not above or below one another. As if you Google ladder of success, you're going to see a whole bunch of people standing suspended in air 
and like, you don't know where to go, what's up there, people constantly say, well, I'm always getting crapped on. Well, look what you're looking at, at. So I believe we turn that ladder from up and down to horizontal. Because now we can put our best foot forward without falling to our death. Everything, the ladder now is like a number line. It provides balance. If something's negative, it's not because you're a bad person. Those people aren't there because they're there to take you down. They're there to remind you in many cases of what not to ever become. So they, they are necessary. And those are the people you want to move from the left of the number line over to the right. So if you didn't have the need in other people, why do we need you? Wow. Yeah. Why do they <laughs> you know, I tell you, uh, and I'm just going to say this right now because there's about <laughs> seven more questions that I want to get to. So okay. I'm going to give you a limitation of 45 seconds for each answer because I these are so important. Uh, the next three questions okay. that I'm getting ready to ask you. And so, and I don't want to get to all of them because I listen to audience need to hear about these things. So <laughs> you just talked about haters. Uh, what I want to what I want to say is, um, you know, you I mean, you've been through it. Uh, and uh, and you're teaching it, and you're just bringing it uh, to others. What would you say uh, is the most thing to bring you joy from day to day? And I'm gonna add this other other question to that. What makes you so passionate about impacting the lives of others? Boom! Oh, I love the way you place that out there, James. Um, I'll be honest with you. I have a long, long way to go yet. I still have things that I have trouble believing in, that I deserve, that, that, that are birthright. I'm still learning um, the direction to things that belong to me. I'm still learning how to find that courage when we look over the shoulder to the life we've already lived, to go back to some of those places of trauma where the door was kicked in. But underneath it is my, my blessing that came in at the same time that trauma door was kicked in on me, that it was born into the process of becoming. Our blessings many times are born into the process of becoming, and we have to wait on it. So my, my greatest joy in what I do today is I help me become better every time I help someone else become better. And I'm greedy, and I'm selfish, and I'm lazy. So for me, if I get up, Every day, you know what God told me? I'm going to tell you what he told me. Lord, you can have it all. And then some. I need you to do two things, though. And I said, what are you? One, get up every day. And make it your life's purpose to bring you to this world something you have never seen. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. Number two. And number two means, Lord, just get up and be willing to do something every day that you've never done. One can't without the other. I can make a big meal out of, out of cauliflower. And where to the grocery store and come back? And I've checked them both. Never have seen it before because I haven't made it. I've never done it before because I've never made it. And then once you see how easy it is, you start to believe in everything you dream. You know, I think we all, um, I think most people, um, there are things that they have not accomplished yet that they really truly want to is there anything that you have not accomplished yet that you would still like to do oh my goodness yes i've never been to europe that's happening this year mm -hmm. you know uh yeah there is there's a lot of things i've never done a lot of them i don't even know yet what they are but it's like this i said this today to somebody on a call Remember the, um, the Michael Jackson video with Billy Jean and he stepped on the sidewalk and the, the sidewalk lit up in front of him? Mm -hmm. I, were, I want to make it all the way around the block. And I know when I'm in, by the purpose, if I step on that sidewalk club and it don't light up some more, I ain't moving. I ain't moving. I mean, I still got work inside this lab. And I look for it. And you know what? It's very easy, you guys. The promise says, seek and you shall find. There's no question in there. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. It is a birthright. And I look, I turn everything up, down, sideways, crooked, anything I have to do to prove that I love to see. Just keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. My friend, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I tell you, we, we know when we done uh, made an impact. And when we 
go to the store, you go to the supermarket, you go any place, and you see your face uh, on the front and the back of the same magazine, the multiple magazines. Hey, you know what? I, I'm I'm a little envious uh, of of you and. Uh, <laughs> Hey, hey, man, can you tell uh, our listening audience how it feel to uh, mm-hmm. be on the Hollywood magazine, the heart of Hollywood, where they got you, and you know that they only pick people that are uh, influential, that doing things, and they put you mm-hmm. on the front and the back. Uh, tell our listening audience a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, it was when I got the download, it's what I call them, divine download. Some people call it inspiration, Holy Spirit. Well, no matter where it comes from, it comes from someplace other than ourselves. And that's what I just told you. Get up every day. We're looking to bring something to the world we never see. Well, this cover, you know, they put me on the back first. And, you know, my show, that's a, that's a moment. And then I was like, well, how do you get on the front? And they were like, well, we have an international male model competition. I was like, oh, forget that. I'm almost 50. Ain't no way. 41 guys in it. I did it. Because it was like three, three, um, like three or four weeks before it was over. It had been a competition for a year. And I got in, God made it happen. And the thing about it is, it's not about the pictures that are on the front of the back. Why that's so important to me. It's that coveted space in between where you can tell all of your story. All of your story. That cover story, uh, you know, real estate, if you will. And so... I, I, I do it so I can get, I have proof. So I can stand in front of those kids and say, look, seven years ago, the only picture I could have showed you that, you know, was a milk shot. But look at this today. Because I've learned, you know, when I was a foster kid and, and I didn't have any kind of dreams that I thought could ever come true. When people talked about me then, when I was, you know, going through my, my learning curve. You know, out there in the streets, on drugs, in jail, in prison, and all that, people talked about me. But now, even when I'm on the cover of magazines, one after the next, after the next, it's those same people talking about me. But you know, I'm like, well, goodness, can you not do anything right? And that's when I learned. You know what? Don't worry about what they say. Just make sure you they keep your name on their tongue. Keep, and keep, they keep your name on their tongue. So we're down to about the last two minutes, two and a half minutes. So just two minutes. minutes. And yeah. uh, I, real quickly, uh, okay, so uh, your program uh, that you're doing, uh, so, so mm-hmm. you. now uh, I'm just not bragging, but I just got picked up for, uh, uh, and I'm going to be in 170 countries, and this show would be part of that as well. Real quickly, can you tell uh, the people that might be listening to this show in about a month from now in another country, uh, just mm-hmm. a, a, a quick takeaway. We only got, uh, you got 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, 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 something uh, that they need to think about because they can. You can do anything you set your mind to. I want you to, I want to whoever this is that's listening, um, and I'm speaking directly to you. I want you to know that there is more for you. Whatever it is you need to do to get through to the next, you know, live your life moment by moment. Get from one moment to the next, and that's all that you need to do. Be consistent, be diligent, one minute, and be on purpose. On everything. On purpose. On purpose, and it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you start from. It doesn't matter what situation that you're in. Uh, it, it's 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 a purpose. God created each and every last one of us for a purpose. You know, Lauren Michael Harris. It's just an honor to call you my friend. Got to have you back on my show again. Thank you so much. I thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much. I I, I, I got to thank my absolutely fantastic co-host Michelle Cooley. Uh, who's always doing the heavy lifting uh, to make sure that we, we, we get this thing and get it right. I'd like to thank my great producer, who, who's also the boss, that's feeling that he, he's a man of multiple hats. Kevin, thank you so much. Most, yeah. <laughs> most important, I'd like to thank our listening audience for always taking the time to tune into the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And we're always looking for sponsors so we can continue to bring 
great guests Amen. like Lauren Michaels, Harris, and uh, and I tell you, we're always looking for sponsors so we can continue to keep this on there. And I tell you, one lead you guys with one important message: always dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. You can do anything that you set your mind to. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do it. It's your life. And you have to discover and you have to take it. So, it's just been an absolutely fantastic show. Lauren, you got to come back on, my friend. I know, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to come on your TV show. Uh, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, right. but uh, yeah, uh, Michelle and I come on there. And I just told I said, you come on mine first. So, I just want to say thank you so much, my friend. It's your life, and we'll be back next week. Same time, same place. It's your life. My name's Cooley, and this is Michelle Cooley. <laughs> we'll see you. <laughs>